What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis, this is TWA Motorsports, and today we are finally getting the front bumper replaced. Um, so here's what we're doing. So this video, it's all gonna happen in this video, but um, as you guys may or may not know, I was driving down the road, a tire flew off of a trailer I was meeting, and hit the front of the uh, Suburban here. I keep wanting to call it a Tahoe. I've never really had a Suburban, so I, I always refer to them as Tahoes. But anyway, obviously you can see the damage on the front bumper. Uh, it busted the headlight. We've already replaced the headlight. Uh, but today I've got a couple, a couple things to do. First of all, we're gonna take the front bumper off. And um, in the end of this video, obviously we'll be putting it back on, but I've gotta get the front bumper off so he can match the paint. That way the vehicle's not just sitting out there in his way. Uh, he's already got the replacement bumper got it all scuffed up primed ready to shoot but he wants this bumper to see kind of what color um, you know there's different alternates when you have it's not just white uh, and you can't just put a paint coat in because there's different alternates so what he'll do is spray out a test panel and then he'll have this bumper to use as a comparison so we got to get the front bumper off the other thing is there is a couple clips that were broken back here behind this headlight i've got those we're going to put those in and i've got new leds for the dims because when it busted my light uh, the housing it also busted the ring that holds the dim in place so got a replacement for that also got a couple replacements for the lights um, because they were open to the elements for a little while so it kind of screwed up the not the daytime running light i believe but the turn signal is doing some wonky things it's just not quite as bright as the other side so we're going to be doing that and um, also i'm going to have him paint the door handles you can see how the door handles are messed up um, just from getting in and out of it. Now, the back ones are fine, so I'm gonna leave those on, but the two front ones where the most, um, the most people get in are just like that, so they're kind of peeling off. So while he's got white in the gun, might as well have him paint those. So I'm gonna show you guys how to take those out as well. But let's get started. I'm gonna start, I think, by getting the 10 millimeters out all along the top, and uh, we'll just kind of work our way through it. So as I said, the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take these 10 millimeters out along the front. I don't know how many there are. A couple of them. And I'm also going to take the headlights loose and there's two 10 millimeters in it on the top. And then if you guys remember when I did this, um, there's a 10 millimeter I went ahead and put in the bottom. Now, this had been replaced before and um, Anytime people do this, they don't know about that bottom one, so they generally don't put it in or they break it. So we're gonna put that in or take that one out as well, but we gotta move the bumper forward to do that. So for the side to get the inner fender loose, there's seven millimeter, there's two seven millimeters, and then there's two like pull tabs, like the plastic push-in clips. And so to take those plastic clips out, I generally use one of these. This thing is so handy to get, um, pieces like that out. Just gotta get underneath them, which sometimes the car's wet, so that doesn't help. You can see that just pulls those tabs right out. Once we get this out of the way, then we'll have access to that other 10 millimeter that's in the headlight. And I'll probably just pull the headlight completely out just to have it out of the way. And obviously we need to do this to the other side as well. I won't show you guys that. I hate working. Like, it, it started raining this morning before I pulled this in. Like, my least favorite thing to do is work on a wet car. Just not a big fan of working on wet cars because I'm probably going to have to lift this thing up and um, I'm going to have to be under it, and so it's going to be dripping on my face, and that just makes me crazy. Anyway, we need to pull this back. I won't be able to show you guys this, but there is a bolt that comes in from the side that goes into the bottom of the headlight that we need to get out. Generally a 10 millimeter. I put a 10 millimeter back in because, like I said, the original one was gone, but that's normally the factory size. Once you get all those bolts out too, and I went ahead and got the one out back here, I probably should have pulled this out first, but this just clips, so you just need to pull it out and that frees it up from the top portion here. So there's a little lip here that these pieces snap into. So you just kind of need to jerk the thing out and uh, we're loose on this side and the headlights completely loose. So at this point, 
you can pull it a little bit forward and you can get your headlight out of place. Kind of tricky and I'll probably put some tape on it when I go back together, um, but we'll get the headlight out here. Like I said, sometimes it's a little tricky just getting past all the little pieces on the bumper. Now that we have both sides loose, you can see I pulled both the headlights out, both sides are loose. I did have to lift it up, like I said, it's wet, so that makes me crazy because it's dripping in my eye, but there's some seven millimeters on the bottom here. You can see one there and there and over there and a couple along the other side. So we're gonna go ahead and take all those seven millimeters out. Once we get that loose, a lot of times this guy's gonna pull out, not a big deal. Uh, so we need to just kinda pull out. Now our fog lights are still hooked up, um, so we're gonna have to watch for that. But we're ready to come forward. We may have a couple sensors to unhook. So I also found that um, a couple pieces of plastic fell down there that were broken during the accident. But now once we've got this loose, we can go ahead and unplug our lights. So as you can see, we got it out of place and um, got it laying here on the floor. Now, because I really don't care about the paint on this, um, you know, not a real big deal, but we do have to take the clips out that hold all this together. So um, you're going to have to be really careful because a lot of times this stuff's getting old and brittle, but you're going to pull out these little clips, kind of push back. And um, once you get them pushed back, you're going to kind of lift this out and we're going to work our way around it, getting all of them loose. It just takes, it takes some time, so be careful. Um, sometimes you can push it through the front side. That's what I'm going to try to do, so I'm not having to pull, because there's two separate pieces of trim. There's the mesh, the black mesh that you see, and then there's the chrome. So what I'd like to do is I'd like, instead of unplugging these, I would like to push the actual chrome piece and that all the way through. Um, that's what I'm going to try to do anyway. The other things we need to take off, obviously the bow tie, just two 10 millimeters there. And then we need to take our fog lights out. There's a little kind of, uh, it's for a tow hook, but it's kind of like a hide that makes it look a little nicer. The, the new bumper does not come with that. And then obviously we're going to have to take this off as well with just some push clips because um, that's going to have to transfer over to the new bumper. But basically anything, that, it only comes with the bumper. So you're going to want to have as many of the clips that you can possibly get. Um, I'm sure that I'll find a couple that are lost. Once I get this off, we'll move this out of the way and I'll show you what clips are broken on the car. Like I said, when I took the bumper off, a couple things fell out and I can see that it's actually one of the clips that I bought to replace. So we'll get this knocked out. Um, just take your time here, guys. I'm telling you. The more time you take, the better off you are. And um, especially on this plastic stuff, you know, on the other stuff, you can be a little more aggressive with like the kind of more rubberish plastics. But these hard plastics, if you uh, bend too much, they will snap off. So you make sure that you take the bow tie out before you take this top one off. But we're almost, we almost got the bottom one out. And I, like I said, I'm trying to take it out with the chrome on it, so it's just less to deal with. You can see what I'm talking about. The chrome snaps separately. And you could take that out, but there's no sense in it. You might as well take it all out as one piece. So these little black tabs are what I was pushing back. And believe me, they are way stronger than these chrome ones. So we got both that out. So all we have to do now is get my little tool to remove these plastic clips. And um, we should be good. I think we've got everything off at that point. So I went to remove the first one of these, thinking that it was going to be a pullout one. And it's not. Check this out. So even I make mistakes from time to time. Now, that's not going to be a huge deal because really that's just support. And I did it on that far one over there but what you're going to need it looks like a proprietary like a square head 
and uh, you gotta unscrew them. So I was telling you about the clip that was broken. You can see this clip right here is broken and that's what fell out on the ground when I took the bumper off. It's supposed to look like this one right here. See that little hook? And that holds the inside of the headlight and I noticed that my headlight uh, seemed to want to push in and didn't line up with the fender. So I'm gonna take those two 10 millimeters out and go grab my new piece that I got to replace that. Just two 10 millimeters. One thing that's crazy is I thought these were not side specific, but they are. So you need to make sure that you get the left or the right. And I'll list this part obviously in the description with all the other stuff I'm using, but you know, it'd be nice if I didn't have to do this. Still on my own dime at this point. All right, now the headlight should at least line up when we put it back together. Well, I think we've got everything off the front that I want to take off. Um, I didn't show you guys, but you can unplug the fog lights in a couple places. You can unplug the bulb directly, or there's a plug right here that's hooked to the front support. And uh, other than that, it looks like all my plastics and stuff are good. Now, this piece right here is broken, it looks like, so I may get a new one of those, the piece that actually holds the bumper um, here in the corner, the front ledge of it's broken. So I may buy another one of those, but other than that, let's move on to the doors and get the handles off. So onto the door panel. Um, not, a, not a whole lot to take apart here. So I'm gonna start here with this guy. Um, you gotta pull it up. And I like to use generally a pick or a flat blade screwdriver. We need to pop this out. Generally a flat screwdriver works, but I have a there we go. So we just pull that out enough to release it and then it pulls off. So that's the first thing we need to do. Now we've got a couple panels here, one behind the armrest and one behind this. And we need to take both those out. Seems like whatever tool I use is not working today. So this gives us access to the 10 millimeter behind that. And then same thing here. Of course we drop it. Two 10 millimeters back here behind this. And then I'm going to pull this upper panel off here, which is just, it should be three parts. Which we pull it, oh no it's two. And we should be able to pull straight up. There. So it is three. Now we can go ahead and take our 10 millimeters out. Uh, and then we'll be able to, we should be able to lift the door panel up at this point. I don't believe there's any more. It's been a while since I've done one of these. And they are different sizes, I believe. I dropped both of those. Now we should be loose at this point to lift the panel up. Am I missing one here? Feels kind of snug. So I thought this was the newer style. Like I said, it's been a while since I took the of these apart. And um, anyway, it's not, they have clips. So we're gonna work our way around. I like to start up here because it's loose and then just work our way and unclip all of the little clips. Here's one of my bolts. I just hate that sound. So once you get those loose, you lift this thing up and we have to unplug a couple things. Um, we need to get the door handle unplugged which sometimes can be a feat. I'm gonna have to have probably a couple screwdrivers. I'll show you guys once I get it unplugged kind of what the deal is here. It's kind of an odd design. So it's got one of those clips where you have to release both sides of it. So the handle's loose. And now we need to get We 
to get all these plugs unplugged. So we need to pull this down a little bit and we need to push these. I don't remember if it's the top plug or the bottom plug. I'll tell you what, I think it's the top one. We'll take them both out. And I always, always forget to put these back in. And it's not a huge deal if you don't put them back in, but I don't know. To me, it's like, I don't know, it's not a big deal to me. But there's two 10 millimeters that come in right here, and it is the bottom one. So I can go ahead and put that other one back in. And you can, they're kind of tough to see. And they're not, there's not a whole lot to them. See if we can get to it. And inevitably, you're going to drop them in the door. It's not a big deal. I've got a magnet over here. We can reach down and get them. There's a big opening right here. So. This one's stripped, which is pretty common in these door handles. It just makes life kind of hard getting it out, to be honest with you. Well, that sucks. All right. Well, this is going to be a little bit harder because that strip just makes life a little worse. I'm going to see if I can get something to get it out. I may have to just force that out and break that handle. Um, it's pretty common that these things strip. They get pulled on a lot. In fact, these things are often replaced because um, they break, uh, especially in the winter months. So I may just have to rip it off there and <laughs> deal with it like that and just replace it. The downside is they don't make a replacement in the body color, they only make a chrome replacement. So, I don't know. We'll just have to work and see if we can get it out. If not, I'm just gonna yank it out and break it. Sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. All right, we got it. It's definitely stripped though. So once we got that, You'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about here in just a second, how it's stripped. Let's move the camera here. So we need to pull this forward. You gotta lift up on the handle as you're pulling it forward. And you can unhook it right here, just like that. But you can see what I'm talking about. There's this little insert. Now I might be able to get lucky and um, I'm gonna hold that insert. I might be able to glue it back in place, but pretty common when you're taking these things off, but no, not a whole lot to it. Just unhooking that, like I said, you do have to pull this so this slides down and then just thread it up and out. You push it forward and up and out. So I'm going to go ahead, get this off here. I'll probably clean this up, put some tape on it because it's going to be a couple days and it's going to have to sit outside. I think it's going to rain. And um, well, we'll cut to putting this thing back together once I get it back from paint. It has now been oh, about a week and a day actually since I started filming this. And I already got the bumper back from paint. You can see it laying there on the ground. Also got my door handles back, looking way better than what they did. Don't have that um, junk flaking off of them. So, new parts that I've ordered. So you guys know about the bumper, obviously. Uh, those are the old door handles. I did order the new piece that goes on the bottom of the bumper, so that um, kind of deflector that goes on the very bottom of the bumper. I ordered a new one of those. I ordered new fog lights because, I don't know if you guys can see that water, that is not going to work. So order new fog lights. Obviously, um, I told you guys in the beginning that the headlights broke. So, uh, or maybe I told you that when I replaced the headlights, but um, the actual headlight, the ring. So I ordered new headlights. And then over here we have the new, or all the tools that I need. I've got new LEDs. Now I'm, I'm going to see if these fit. These are supposed to not hyper flash. The ones that I have in it currently, they do hyper flash, which means they need a module in order to fix that but if these will work then i will use those instead but they may not we'll have to see and then as you can see i got the new piece that goes on the front this piece right here is broken um not a whole lot to it
but need to get that replaced as well. Other than that, you can see I've got the headlights. Those are the new dims that are going in. So I think what we're going to do is we're probably going to start by assembling uh, at least part of the front bumper. And um, once we get that complete, I think I'm going to try to put as much in there as possible. Once I get the front bumper kind of assembled, then I'll move on. I think I'm going to go ahead and put the headlights in. The reason I want to do it that way is because it gives me access to put that bolt that comes in from the side a little bit easier and then we can feed hopefully the bumper around that that's that's the goal anyway so um, let's get you guys set up on a tripod and we'll see what we can get accomplished now I figured what we'd start with is this guy because it does hold the bumper kind of together and to me it needs to be in first and we're gonna see how well it fits with the aftermarket bumper not looking like it fits stellar. Oh, maybe it's not too bad. These things are like screws that go in. Really odd. It's like a square head. Not a whole lot to those. But obviously, we have several of them to put in. This bumper shape, when it ships to you guys, is it's like folded up in a box. It's really terrible, the shipping. So hopefully, this will help it conform. I asked my painter if he wanted me to bring this piece out to him. It might have helped him, but he said he really didn't need it. He thought it'd be okay without it. But I can tell you that on the sides here, it doesn't look like those are gonna line up real great. These might be okay. So I think there's a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven of them total that hold all this together. I'm a little nervous about the fitment of this just because the bumper is so wadded up. I'm hoping, like I said, that this helps kind of conform as I put this stuff together. So as you can see, I'm having some issues with getting this piece into place. Um, like I said, this bumper was so oddly shapen uh, when I got it out of the box that none of this stuff wants to fit real great. If I could get this started, I might be able to get it in place, but Man, it is not, not wanting to go. When I get one side, the other side seems to pop out. We'll see. We'll keep trying. Not giving up yet. I feel like I got a pretty good start there. Got it. All right, let's grab that other one. Let's see if we can get it on. Yeah. So you can see I've kind of got it lined up. There's this really odd clip that went in this one. We got to get the bow tie on as well. I think we've got it in place. All right. Now I'm going to put the bow tie on there. Just two 10 millimeters hold that guy in place. And uh, I think that's about it. Other than I might snap the fog lights in, just because to me it'd be a little easier on the ground like this.
You can see I got the bow tie in place. Now you gotta be real careful. I would run these down by hand um, because these speed nuts just going on to plastic. So they're really easy to strip. So you don't wanna put a ton on them. I think GM even thought that. The reason I say that is there's a piece of two-sided tape on this as well. So I think we're good. I'm gonna scratch it a little bit. Oh, maybe not, that's just a piece of dirt. All right, we're getting there. Now we just need to uh, get those fog lights shoved into place and they literally just push in. So these new fog light housings, they actually come with a bulb. So I just unclip the bulbs. This is the weirdest clipping bulb and these aftermarket ones don't want to stay in. So, I mean, it's in there pretty snug, but I don't like the way it fits. I think it's going to rattle. So I am actually going to wrap that in a little bit of electrical tape. I know it's kind of hokey, but I'm telling you, it'll probably keep it from falling out. That's what I did. I actually had done to it before. I don't know if you guys noticed that in the beginning of the video, but I am going to wrap that a little bit to both keep water out and just to make sure that that thing doesn't go anywhere. Now I was really adamant about keeping all the plastic plugs, but this new light actually comes with the new plastic plug. So what I'm hoping is that we can just feed it up through here and push it into place. That's generally how they go as you push it all into place at one time. Just like that. Make sure that our clips are all seated and they are. And we're ready to plug that in when we go on with the bumper. So we got everything installed on the bumper. The unfortunate part is my bow tie separated. Check that out. So gonna have to order a new one. I mean, I could glue that on and maybe I do that. I don't know, but it's a good time to buy another one, I guess. So let's move on to the headlights. Obviously we need to put the new bulbs into the headlights. And then I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and try to mount the headlights in place. Actually, before I put the lights in, I'm gonna go ahead and replace this thing. Should just be two tens. And chances are, I may not have to have replaced this, but check this out. Let's look at the new one compared to the old one. So you can see that is what clips the bumper in. And you notice that the front clip is gone. So that's part of what fell out from under the truck when I was uh, taking the bumper off, along with that other piece that we already replaced behind the headlight. So in my opinion, yeah, we probably needed to replace that. It wasn't on the original estimate, uh, which by the way, guys, I haven't been paid yet. And I'm gonna go out on a limb and say I'm probably not going to get paid. But that's okay. We're going to fix it. And this just bolts right back in the same spot it came out of. If I can find it. There we go. And that goes a long way of holding that front lip in. It kept popping out. And this, before I took the bumper off, I kept coming over here and like knocking it in with my leg. And it's got little things to keep it lined up, so you shouldn't have to align it or anything. Now this is part of what holds this liner in place too. That has one of your bolt holes for this liner. So it sandwiches the two together. So now that part, that part wasn't broken, but you definitely need this piece in there. So let's move to the headlights now. So we need to unplug the old headlight. And this is just that regular bulb. And you can see that it kind of smashed the fan Hopefully the fan still works on this one. I think it does. We may end up having to replace those as well. But I've been really impressed with these bulbs from Oxbeam. They just, they seem to do a really good job. 
And remember, they need to be facing up and down. So they generally go in only one way. Let me to look on the front and make sure they're in there. So this, obviously, you gotta snake some stuff around to make this work. The other thing, guys, is obviously before I put the bumper on, I'm gonna test this to make sure that everything's good. And I don't remember which one's our daytime rain line. I feel like this is the blinker. It is. And we're gonna see if these other bulbs, these new, I guess they're LASFIT, Pretty big head on them. I don't know if they're going to go in here or not, but we're going to try it. We're all, This is another reason why we're going to test it. Sometimes these bulbs are polarity specific. So if they are, make sure that they work. Ooh, that's a tight fit. It went in. So let's plug this thing up in here. See if we can run a couple bolts in it. At least one on the top to hold it in place. And then we'll test the, not only the turn signal, but we'll test the headlights as well. I'm going to go ahead and plug this thing in. I didn't hear it snap. I think we got it though. And I pulled these, obviously these pieces up while we're putting it in place. And so we need to go in. I'm going to kind of tuck stuff around as you're going in, but you need to go into the fender. You're going outside with this outer piece. And then that new part that we put in needs to clip into place. Did you hear that? Clipped in. So we're going to go ahead and put a bolt or two in. That fitment still is not definitely. I think we definitely moved the fender some when this wreck happened. There's only three bolts that hold it in the one from the side and then the two on the top. So I'm going to leave it there. Let's go turn the car on and see if it works. That light is ridiculously bright. Let's try the headlights. All right, so we've got, that's our bright light. It doesn't look like, it doesn't look like the dims are working. Oh, that's weird. It looks like the dim is working. How weird. Okay, so obviously we need to switch the wiring around on that dim light. Maybe reverse it and see if it comes on. Everything else seems to be working though. These are switchbacks and uh, kind of cool. I like that better. You notice I didn't have a hyper flash either. So all I had to do is reverse that and we're working. So let's go knock the other side out. So at this point, we're gonna see if we can get the bumper in place. And uh, I got my son out here to help me. So hopefully we can maneuver it. I've got some tape on that. I may end up putting some tape on the bumper as well. We'll just see once we get it up in place and kind of figure out where it needs to be. Let's fall the lights in. Um, see that fog light plug right there? See where it goes? You? Yeah.
actually fit surprisingly well. I'm actually kind of surprised. Um, I had a little bit of an issue on the passenger side there where I put that new piece in just because it was really snug. But yeah, I'm liking it. Um, I think, like I said, because it was all folded, the gaps, it looks like are just a hair off. But I think as it relaxes, I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna be good. Now, as I said, I'm gonna have to replace my bow tie, but I'm gonna peel this rest of this tape off and we'll keep going. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put these 10 millimeters in across the front. Like I said, I think that'll help start to conform this. Once it gets some heat out in the sun, I really think it'll relax some. And I can reach, looks like I can reach down in there and change the bow tie, which is good. I didn't want to have to take this all back apart. Now, before we put that bottom piece on, this clip goes on the very end, the very last hole on the bottom of the bumper here, and then you have four bolts. Three of them hold this on, and then that last one ties on to the end of that rubber piece or that plastic piece that we're gonna put on last. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the, at least the three in, and then we'll grab that piece and try to snap it in place. Now for this thing, uh, which was broken actually when I, when I bought this truck, it was snapped here on the side, but you can see where the bolt holes are for those clips that we put in, but the rest of it, it just pushes in. So we're going to see if we can get it into place. Um, I know sometimes these things are a pain to get in where they go, but we're sure going to try. It's going to be a fun fit, I have a feeling. Now that we got that in, the last thing we need to do is put our bolts and our push pins in the side. So obviously, um, like I said, that piece, that, that new part that we put in, that's how this top one lines up. So may have to maneuver around a little bit. I think I'm actually going to have to be where the camera is. But 7mm top, 7mm bottom, and then push pins everywhere else. So check it out. Looks way, way better. Obviously the bow tie. but wow what a difference and my painter did an awesome job matching the paint um i don't know if you guys can tell that but i'm pretty i'm pretty impressed with the fitment other than the fact that it shipped watered up in a ball um it seems to conform and like i said i think once it gets out in the sun um it'll relax a little bit i noticed that the line here with the hood where it comes down and that's where it was kind of it was just kind of rolled over so i like i think as it relaxes in the sun um i think we'll lose some of that at least i'm hoping but it doesn't look bad, honestly, for, um, I think I spent 200 bucks, maybe, maybe a little less than that actually, shipped to my house for this. And my painter just scuffed it. He said he sealed it, of course primed it, and then painted it, and then cleared it uh, with some flex additive in the clear, obviously. But looking good. So now, let's move on to the door handles. So for the door handle, um, you can see I put tape on this because it was parked outside, and it was raining, and I didn't want junk or water to go in it. So, got that out of the way. Now I'm using a magnet. Um, and the two bolts that you're wanting to use are the small ones. So you, they're all 10 millimeters that you take out of the door panel. But these little bitty small ones are what you want to use. Now, it's very important that you hook up, obviously, your lock and your, um, your door prop or your door rod. I could find the lock, it's in here somewhere. Where'd you go? You may have fallen down the door. I don't feel it in there. Well, I may have to reach in there and find it. Anyway, guys, do not put these in with an impact. Um, you'll risk stripping out that other side. You remember when I took the other side out, I took it out with an impact, and I don't know why I did that. I should have thought about that before. Um, but you want to lightly, I'm using, like I said, a 
magnet on the end here and I'm going to thread them in by hand and then I'm going to tighten it up very gently with a ratchet just so by hand so that's what we're going to do in order to get this back on I got to get this prop rod out though or the uh, lock rod I think it just fell back oh no here it is you can see it right here we'll just put it there for now all right so we need to hook that rod up first and it just sandwiches in here in the red opening I don't know why I just did that I lied to you guys you need to do the handle first the reason why is the handle kind of threads on so like that and then we can push the rod in and then we're going to open this handle in order to give us room to slide that in place. And my dad gun lock rod fell out here. Hopefully I don't have to buy a new clip. There, it's in there now. All right, so anyway, we're gonna open this up. And we're gonna thread it in. kind of goes, it kind of slides in. So once you're here, kind of pushes back at the same time you're going in. So it's hooked up. Now all we need to do is use that magnet to put the bolts in just the opposite way that we took the old ones out. Now, since you guys are on camera, I'm going to do this and I guarantee I'll drop one. It just always happens that way. Need my light. And it's not a big deal if you drop one. Because you can reach in the door and get it. Just more of a pain. So I got the first one. Now the second one goes. In here, it's a little bit harder to reach. Sometimes I magnet strong enough to at least start them threading in. I think that's what I'm going to try to do. these by hand. Make sure it's in place where you want it. And if it feels like it's cross-threading at all, stop. Because they're really easy to bust. tightened up and um, we'll be good to put start putting this door panel back together so I always like to test it before I put the door panel on and we're good there so now we're ready to go ahead and put the door panel on a couple things you want to take note of is um, let me show you here obviously we have a bunch of wiring to plug in but these guys here sometimes fall out so make sure that that's there otherwise your 10 millimeters that hold that on won't work this guy here just drops in place, drop the ball in, then you can thread it around and push the clip in place. But other than that, uh, I got a few clips that stayed in, so I'm going to go grab my uh, remover, pull those out, and go ahead and put them in the panel. But we're good to go back on. Remember I told you when I started I never put these back in? Hey, looky there. I'm remembering. So. There's so many connections here. I don't really understand why there needs to be this many. But you need to plug in all your switches here. And sometimes it's easier to have somebody hold it up while you look underneath. Um, especially if you haven't, you can't find, they only plug in one way, so you can't screw it up. 
Sometimes it takes a little bit to do it though. Once we do that, like I said, we'll hook up this and then we kind of have to drape it over the top here into this little channel and then down and we snap it in all the way around. So once we get everything in place, I like to, once I put the door panel on before I actually put the bolts in, I like to test all the switches, which I did. Put this on, make sure it's unlocked, and it is, and then we push this little center tab in. Good. Um, other than that, just putting our 10 millimeters back in. all the same size so we'll get those back in and then our little cover plates and then our top plate up top so good news and bad news good news is we got um, everything obviously assembled on the front got the door handles back in both sides um, I didn't show you guys this side because I did have to and I actually don't even think I needed to do it uh, but I did put a little bit of two-part epoxy to hold that inner sleeve in. Now, I had to really force it into place, so I really think that me taking it out with the impact was the problem. So don't think we're going to have any issues there. It didn't spin at all going back together, so we are good. I just don't think using even the smaller impact is a good idea on those. But um, so on to the bad news. Well, some more good news, actually. We have a new billet uh, bow tie, and look at that. It actually screws on, it comes with uh, studs to put it in, which is going to be way nicer. Of course, this one's separated when I was putting it back together, so not a big deal there. I can sneak back behind, get it loosened up. But the bad news is one of my headlights is not working. And when I originally put this together, it seemed like one was kind of flaky, um, and that's the new bulbs that I put in. So I'm gonna have to take this apart. I'll do it off camera and um, either send it off for a replacement or uh, figure out what's going on with it. Like I said, it was kind of flaky from the beginning. Now I do have the original one that was on this side, uh, but obviously the one on the other side was broken, but I'm gonna go ahead and fix that. And what I'll show you guys, we'll show you once it's all finished up, I'm gonna try to clean this thing up. And um, I really, really wanna show you those turn signal bulbs because I'm really excited about those. Absolutely crazy how much better they are than the ones that I had before. So I will be using those, I think, going forward on other projects, but let's get the, uh, bow tie in we'll get it all cleaned up get the headlights working and we'll kind of give you guys a walk around once we're all finished up here before I show you guys this in the daylight and I'll show you this again in the daylight but I wanted to show you these new side marker lights that I got so look how bright those things are and it's kind of hard to see with the headlights on but I want this I want you to see the blinker and how crazy bright these are switchbacks look at how bright that thing is and we don't have any hyper flash like we had before uh, like I said, those are all built in, so the resistors are built into the bulbs, which makes them a little more pricey, but definitely what I might go to from now on. Uh, I don't think I'll be using what I was using. I was using those Zevos before, and not that there's anything wrong with them. It's just that uh, they require you putting resistors in if you don't want hyper flash. So definitely a game changer here. I love these, and I will list those as well as everything else, obviously, in the description. But like I said, let's get it cleaned up. We'll come out in the daylight and take a look at it. Okay, so remember when I said I'm going to show you guys this thing all cleaned up? Well, Mother Nature has decided otherwise. So it's actually been about two weeks since I finished filming that last uh, clip. But the, that was at night. You guys noticed at night when I pulled it out. The very next night, the temperature just plummeted. So I've spent about a week and a couple days below 10 degrees as an average high. And then like two days ago, we got uh, five inches of snow. And then last night we got another five or six inches of snow for a total of about anywhere from eight inches to a foot of snow, just depending on the area. But well, as you can see, I didn't get a chance to wash it because the temperature has been too cold, but I have been driving it. I just, I'm frustrated because you guys know that I like to keep my stuff clean. I like to show everything all cleaned up when I'm finished with the video. And well, unfortunately I can't do that right now, but I wanted to show you guys that it was finished and you pretty much seen it in the shop. The only other thing that we have to contend with is this little mark here. And um, I will show you guys a video when I fix that. I'll just put that in a separate video because there's some other touch up that I wanna do on the car and there's a special product that I like to use. But um, there is some good news about in this time of wait. So obviously this happened back in November and now here we are in February. And um, we normally don't get this kind of snow by the way, just so you guys know, it's been years since we've had more than like 
just a dusting of snow but here lately it's been crazy but anyway um so the exciting news i was going to tell you about is two day or actually yesterday i got a call from the insurance company who i filed the claim with and they are going to pay the claim so all of this stuff that i've put out of my own pocket is going to get paid for which is exciting because what i'll do is i'll just put that in another project because obviously i had to buy this out of my own pocket and uh that'll just basically reimburse what i used and uh, we'll use it on another project. So some exciting news, even though this weather has been terrible, I haven't had a chance to really work out in the shop because it's been ridiculously cold. And it's like, I think it's 10 degrees right now as I'm standing here filming this and the shop heater is work, while it's working, it's not working real stellar. It works for like the first time I turn it on. Then when I go to turn it on again, it doesn't want to fire back up. So I haven't spent a lot of time out in the shop, which has made me crazy. So I've had like, I've pre-filmed some of these videos, but the endings and stuff, I haven't been able to film because of the weather. So I just figured I'd show you guys this. Like I said, I'll give you an update when I do the touch up on the rest of it, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, well, I'm really excited because like I said, I'm getting paid back for damage that wasn't caused by me. But if you did like this video, guys, like always, please smash that thumbs up button. If you are not subscribed, go down there, hit that subscribe button. While you're down there, make sure you ring the bell icon. That notifies you every time we drop a new video and stay tuned. So hopefully we'll get some good weather and we'll work on something else soon.